Christ's first coming is the establishment of the kingdom of Christ and his patience. Now, please pay attention. The first coming of the Lord was to establish the, his kingdom on earth and with his kingdom had to come patience. So, in other words, when we read in Revelation chapter 1 verse 9, which we read at the very beginning of it. In Revelation 1 9, look at John the Beloved, how he puts it so beautifully. I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. So the kingdom of Christ, patience is associated with, with it. So the first coming of the Lord, he gave us salvation, but with salvation, he demanded of us patience. He demanded of us patience. So Christ's first coming is salvation and patience. Christ's second coming will give us salvation and glory. That's why they all shouted, Hallelujah, salvation followed by glory. So salvation first coming, glory second coming. See how the Holy Bible talks. Salvation, first coming, glory, second coming. So what is the word of our Lord Jesus Christ trying to tell us? What is it trying to tell us? It's trying to tell us the following. Every Christian who is walking in the Lord's path, every Christian, who is walking in the Lord's path, received salvation. However, that Christian needs to be patient with the salvation. Every Christian who received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior was giving in the first coming of the Lord. The Lord gave that Christian salvation. But with that salvation, he said to that Christian, you need to be patient with this salvation. Why? 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 Because whoever walks in the Lord's path will be persecuted. This goes without fail. Whoever walks in the Lord's path will be persecuted and there is no escape from it. When you try your hardest by the grace of the Lord, you truly and genuinely wish to be with the Lord. You want to make him your portion. As long as you are following in the footprints of the Lord Jesus as up, up until the second coming. So when it's his first coming and you're walking in the Lord's footpath, you will 100% be persecuted. And let me assure you and guarantee this will, will, will happen. You will be persecuted by two categories. One, your own Christians. Secondly, the world. So not only the strangers, but those who are family members. So if you are a true follower of the Lord at home, your own family members will persecute you. And if you are a true follower of the Lord in the church, your own church family will persecute you. They'll go against you. Why? Because the Lord says, my first coming, I gave you my salvation, but with it, it required from you Patience. Salvation from me, patience from you. Because my first coming, I did not rule completely on the whole world. Who did I rule over? Those who received me as Lord and Savior from the world. I took them out of the world and I brought them into the kingdom of heaven. So those whom I took out of the world and brought them into the kingdom of heaven, 
to those I gave salvation, but I said to them, you are still in the world. And as long as you're in the world, you will be persecuted because the way the world treated me, I, Jesus Christ, will treat you the same. There is no disciple greater than his or her master. No one. No one is greater than the Lord. So whatever the Lord endured, if you're walking in his footprints, you will have to endure according to what you are capable of handling by his grace. And this is why you need patience. You go and speak about the Lord Jesus, <clears throat> people will go against you within the church and outside the church. They will ridicule you. They will say some nasty things about you. They will depose you. They will kick you, punch you left, right and center. Your own people. Why? Because you wish to be for the Lord. Because not every Christian is for the Lord. So when you are speaking the language of the Lord in his own house, and those people who are in his house that have chosen to live for themselves, not for the Lord, they will not speak with one voice. They will not speak the same language because if I am in the house of the Lord and doing it my way, then I am different to Jesus Christ and I am different to every other Christian who wishes to live for Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So when I speak the Lord's language, those who chose not to live for the Lord, but for themselves, they will go against me and persecute me because their language is not the Lord's. The Lord is love. They lack love. The Lord is humility. They lack humility. The Lord is forgiving. They lack forgiveness. That's why they will retaliate. You are affecting us. You are giving us grief and discomfort. You choose to live at the gutter, but we choose to live in high places. How is that going to work? It's not going to work now because it's causing them a lot of problems and issues. So now they have either to try and imitate the Lord, but it's very costly because they don't want to give up on this luxurious lifestyle. So how can I give up on the limousine? How can I give up on the red carpet rolled under my feet? How can I give up on this comfort sitting behind the desk, not even making my fingernail go a little bit muddy? How can I give up on this gold and linen? How can I give up on the mansion? How can I give up on the millions? Because if I truly follow the Lord, the Lord said, the son of man has no place to even put and lay his head on. The birds of the sky have a nest and the foxes have homes, but the son of man has no place to put his head on. Do you want me to give up on all this lifestyle and luxury and prestigious way of living for the sake of Jesus. And on top of that, I follow him and then be persecuted, hated, despised, kicked, punched, ridiculed by the world. No way. Let me sit with the prime minister and the president and those big caliber boys, rich people. I need to sit with them. I need to dine with them. I need to live a life of glory. I can't give all that up for the sake of Jesus and then be persecuted for his sake on top of that. I wish if he had made me live like a king, I would have followed him, but I'm not even a slave and a street beggar when I follow Jesus. I'm not giving up on all that. So what's going to happen? Persecute everyone who wishes to live for Jesus Christ, even within his own house. Now, if the Christians 
who are supposed to be brothers in Christ are persecuting their own brother. What do you think the world is going to do to a Christian, a true Christian following Jesus? 